Hello, everyone. I'm Mary. I'm a career coach for SUNY Oswego Career Services, and I focus on working with exploratory and undeclared students. So I want to thank you tonight for joining us for Imagine 2022. This session, session is entitled Alumni Success Stories, The Journey from Who Am I to Look at Me Now. And it features our very own alumni. So Tom Hanford, Nell and Picardo, and Wen Shi. So this event is the fourth event of Imagine 2022, and it's our first panel of Imagine 2022. Really exciting. And all of the, these events are sponsored by the President's Office, Career Services, and the Oswego Alumni Association. So now I'm going to hand it over to Catherine Rodriguez, a current student who's going to be facilitating the session for us. Hi, everyone. My name is Catherine Rodriguez. Uh, my major is wellness management and a couple fun facts about me is that I love to roller skate and ice skate. I recently taught myself over the summer. Another fun fact about me is that I came into Oswego undeclared. So I'm really excited to be a part of this panelist. A few things to keep in mind before we get started is that tonight, tonight's Zoom session will be recorded and posted on the Imagine 2022 website. So if you did miss anything, you can come back to it another time and rewatch it or share it with your friends. You are welcome to use the chat for this session. And at the end, we will have time for you guys to ask the panelists any questions you may have. But if you haven't already, Mary has put the Imagine 22 interest form in the chat. Check it out on the Imagine 22 website so you don't miss anything. And let's get started. I'm excited to introduce the panelists, Tom, Natalie, and Wen. I will give you the floor to introduce yourself for and speak about your educational backgrounds, what you do now, and the involvement you are part of in Oswego. Um, I, I'll get started, I guess. I'm, uh, I'm Tom Hanford. Uh, I am the uh, executive director and registrar at SUNY Cortland. I'm also the project lead for educational pathways at the State University of New York System Administration currently working on a grant funded project. Um, my education background is uh, obviously first SUNY Oswego, uh, Bachelor of Arts in Sociology class of 2000. Uh, and then from there, I went on to get a master's degree and a doctorate at the University of Buffalo. Um, and in terms of uh, some of the things I did when I was a student, I was very uh, involved in student government. Uh, I was a, a vice president uh, in, in the student association. Uh, and the things that I learned while doing that uh, made a big impact on me to the point that I still am working in higher education today. I'll get started. Um, I'm Gwen, and I'm currently working at KBMG as an internal, I mean, as an audit, um, audit associate. And I started at Oswego in 2015 as an undeclared student. So definitely at the time, I have no idea like about my career paths and not even my major. But as of today, I know that like what I wanted for my career paths and so as we go, um, I think during my sophomore year, I choose to do like something related to business. After taking a bunch of classes, I found that like accounting was the most interesting to me. Um, and I decided to do the five-year accounting program. So that way I can get my both bachelor degree and my MBA degree from SUNY Oswego. While I was on campus, I was involved in um, different organizations and clubs too. So based, I think I was very active, involved in accounting society, Beta Alpha Psi, and NATES, and like CSSA, those clubs. Hey everyone, so my name is Natalyn. I am currently a special education math teacher in Washington Heights, New York. Um, I graduated from Oswego with my bachelor's of arts in chemistry. My plan was to go to medical school and somehow I ended up teaching math. 
So I decided to continue with that educational route and got my master's from Grand Canyon University and graduated last year with my master's in special education and have been doing that ever since. When I was attending SUNY Oswego, I did a couple of different clubs. So I was part of the chemistry club as well as the student health advisory committee, which worked very closely with our on-campus clinic. Thank you, everybody. Kat, do you want us to get us started with some of our planned questions and then we can take some questions from our participants afterwards? Yes. Okay. So we're going to start off with myth versus fact. Um, What is something that you are proud of related to your career? Uh, I guess I'll start with that one. Um, I think that for me, being able to come back to my community where I grew up and be able to just guide the younger kids, because I do work with sixth graders. So being able to just assist those students in the ways that I needed certain guidance when I was their age, and just being able to give back to their students as well as like the families and just transition them from when most of my students are immigrants. So being able to assist them in that transitional period. I would, um, I would say I'm, I'm sort of a proud to still be with SUNY. Um, my time at SUNY Oswego was, was really life-changing for me. It, it gave me a, a sense of, of, uh, of purpose and a sense of who I was. I was able to discover who I was in a lot of ways while I was at Oswego. Um, and it had, like I said in the introduction, it had a big enough impact that I decided I wanted to stay in higher ed. And I'm proud in terms of uh, being related to my career, I'm proud to still be uh, serving uh, it within SUNY, both at my campus, uh, the campuses I've served at in the past and, and with the system, um, uh, because I, I do think that schools like SUNY Oswego and, and all of our SUNY schools really have the potential to uh, to, to, to give you a transformative experience and to, to have you uh, learn about yourself and, and it gives you the, the mobility and the sort of the wheels and, and the interest to, to move on and, and move up and, and do new and different things in your life. So uh, that's, that's something I'm very proud to, to have to, 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 to still be doing um, after all these years uh, of being in SUNY. Um, so my job is auditor. So basically we like, my job is to audit like the different companies financial statements. So basically I, my main focus is on the public companies. So it's mainly serving the investors because like investors, they rely on financial statements to make their um, judgments, whether they need to invest on this company or like to see how this company will grow. Not only their histor historical data, like looking at their historical data and decide if they need to invest. So that's something that I feel proud of. And also I really like the people that in this industry like I'll be meeting a lot of like really talented people and you have direct opportunity to work those like senior manager, director and partners. So that's something that I feel really proud of and always like learning. Okay, thank you panelists. I have a myth or fact question for you guys. Do you think you have to have it all figured out by senior year? 
I can start with that. I'll say definitely not. <laughs> if you can do that, that's great. But like, I would say a lot of people probably don't know. Because like during my senior year, I was still looking for um different type of internship because like I found that like maybe it would be better if I to have some internship experience to know like the industry that I'll be going to. For example, like um during my senior year, I applied a lot of different internship, like whether it's related to um audit or tax, like because like that's a very common area that accounting major will go to. So I was applying a bunch of them. And then also like I had some um like based on the application that I apply, I have responses from them. And also like at the time you'll be kind of like knowing to know the people that you'll be working with and then the people in that industry. I, I would say that helps, but like, don't worry about, you have to figure out what exactly what you want during your senior year. Yeah, I, I completely agree. You don't need to know everything by your senior year. Um, in fact, I, I think you don't at, at any point really need to know what you're going to do for the rest of your life ever. <laughs> um, you know, I'm in my 40s now, and I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up, that sort of thing. I tell people that all the time, because, um, you know, you're always growing and changing. And um, there's always um, new things to learn, whether it's in accounting or teaching or uh, higher ed, uh, no matter what your, your your area of, of emphasis is or what, whatever career path you end up taking, you're probably going to come across things that interest you that may pull you in different directions and may present you with new and, and really exciting opportunities and, and uh, you know, chances to, to change your career or chances to change what you quote unquote want to be when you grow up. <laughs> I am going to have to also agree, like at least for me, when I graduated from Oswego, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I did a program that helps people transition into education. And after doing that for a year is when I figured out that this is what I really wanted to do. But I'm also always considering a different transition because you got to think about how big the field is, whether that is you are into education, there are a lot of different parts of education you can be a part of, or you're into the sciences, there are many different things you can do, whether that is you wanna go into medicine or you wanna go into teaching or any other different route. So just always be open to different ideas and just learning and trying things out. That is the most important part. You all make a great point. Tom and Wen, you both came in undeclared. Can you speak about your experience and what helped you choose your major? Um, so I start with undeclared because at the time I really don't know like um, what should I choose. And I didn't just want to like pick a random one. So I knew that I, I had interest in education and business. So I kind of like, um, like that was my like initial interest, but then I also didn't want to just limit on this two area. So during my freshman year, I was taking different classes, but like that also helped with your um, gen ed classes. So when you're taking different classes, you will know that whether you like it or not. So like that was kind of the process that helped me to narrow down. And then I was also taking the GST class, um, GST 10, like that help you to figure out like um, maybe some of the area or some of the majors that you'll be interested in. After that, I decide that I think I'll, uh, I'm more toward to the business side. Then I start taking more different um, business classes. And then during my sophomore year, that's the time I decide that I'll choose accounting. And then um, at believe it's during my almost like the end of sophomore year I also decided to do the five-year accounting program so like with uh, SUNY Oswego has that program with five year you can get your both bachelor and your MBA degree 
you know, when I first came in, I thought initially I wanted to be in, in the business program. Uh, that was sort of where I was gravitating towards. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, after that, I, you know, I realized very quickly that that probably wasn't the area that would, uh, would, would, would hold my interest. I, I just didn't have, I personally felt I just didn't have the mind for that type of, uh, to go into, into the business major. So um, I explored a little bit. Uh, I, I, I think it was pretty close to the end of my sophomore year when I really settled on my major. So it took me a little bit of time, but I, I gravitated towards English thinking I might be an English teacher because I was very interested in literature and I was a big reader. So I thought, oh, maybe, maybe that's what I'd like to do. And ultimately, the way that I determined what major would be would be similar to what Wenna said. It was through the general education courses and the things that we were we were asked to take. They were very broad and introducing things I might not have normally been part of. I might not nor normally have chosen if I thought I knew what I wanted to do. Uh, and I took a sociology class, and it was very difficult. <laughs> I, it was an introductory sociology class. And I really struggled with it, but um, it was such a different way of thinking from uh, from how I had been thinking, and and um, it, it presented me with ideas uh, about thinking about society that I I had just never considered. And because of that, I I went on. I took a second sociology class and a third, and before I knew it, I was like, "This is this is my major," and I declared sociology, and had a great experience in the sociology department there, and then uh, stuck with it in, into graduate school. So uh, it was it was kind of a process, and it's okay to change your major a couple of times, or even to say like, "I really don't know. <laughs> maybe this, maybe that." Um, at the time. Uh, again, I'm a little older, but at the time at the, at the library, we could go into the library and we could take out VHS tapes, <laughs> sign those out, and they had little study carols and you could watch the tapes and they had careers. And I used to go in there very frequently and take out those videos and try to watch different types of career options to try to discover what, what maybe I, you know, what I was made to do. So as an undeclared student, you know, avail yourselves of all those things. You don't have to do VHS tapes anymore, thank goodness, <laughs> and sign them out. <laughs> but, you know, use the online resources that you have and, and different things. And that's, it's, um, it's okay to, to explore. So the way I chose my major really was through experimentation a little bit. Uh, and by, by using the gen ed classes, I think in the way that they have been intended, which is to kind of open your eyes to new ideas and maybe point you in, in, in some different directions. Thank you for sharing. I'm sorry, my dog is barking. She hears people also. Uh, <laughs> okay, looking back, what was the most impactful experience, resource, or service? that help you explore careers? And what is something you wish you took advantage of? Sorry for the background noise. No worries. Um, I think a lot of professors, they really helped me. So like, now um, I'll say two most Resort, um, two of the most important resources that helped me. One, one was the GST class, because like, that kind of like, after taking the class, like at the end of semester, that's the time I decided that I'll go to business side. And then once I go to business side, I need to figure out because like there are marketing, there are finance, there are accounting, there are um, business admin. There are different, many different um, business majors. So when I took those classes, I'll talk to those professors to know just like to understand each major more and then like and then also like talk to big set so i think like each school of uh, each school they have like their own office so for a school of business they have an office called basic so basically you can talk to also talk to the worker there they help you to show you each of the major so if you're if you're interested in marketing major they show you all the courses that you'll be taking 
and then like you can do some a little bit more research on your own just to explore like what kind of career paths that people with this kind of major and then as i say after i realized that i was interested in accounting classes then i talked to um several accounting professors and then that was the time they also they brought out to me that like, oh, we have five year accounting program. Like, are you interested in doing, doing that? And I also applied that. So I will say professors at SUNY Oswego, they really helped me a lot when coming to like choosing my majors. Um, I would, I would uh, say similarly that probably um, what in terms of exploring careers, the resources that helped me most were my professors at the time. Um, talking to them, um, many. I was in the sociology department again, and that was also where public justice public justice was. Uh, and so many of of the folks that I worked with had uh, different careers uh, either before uh, working in higher ed at the time. Um, or um, worked very closely with uh, different uh, agencies, police departments in some cases. So they really kind of helped me think about the kinds of careers that are out there um, and introduced me to people uh, in many cases uh, who, were, who were practitioners who were out working in the world. And they also, by being able to relate some of their experiences and talk about the research they were doing, especially research that folks were doing in central New York, uh, I was able to learn a lot about what kinds of things were out there, like what jobs were out there, who, who were the folks that were uh, making changes in, 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 our, uh, in our area, um, what kinds of, at the time, again, uh, uh, the public, it was a public justice uh, uh, program as well, um, uh, there was a very big interest in uh, uh, community policing, and, and they connected uh, many of us in the department with folks in the city of Syracuse and, and at the time at Baldwinsville and different areas where they were doing different types of community policing things. So it was a really rich experience in terms of both learning about careers, but also being able to actually see some of that in action um, by you know, connecting with with actual practitioners and connecting with professors who were in touch with them or who were practitioners themselves. For me, I think it was just a little bit of Oswego in general. I was able to talk to professors who were part of the chemistry department, but also outside of it. So when I was thinking about what to do in regards to going to medical school, I was able to speak to the professors that were managing that department at the school and have them guide me in, maybe this is not the right thing for me, how can I go exploring that? And also just connecting with people in the community. Um, I was able to work with the Oswego High School and speak to the teachers there and just get their perspective on those things, as well as doing different programs on campus like Mentor Oswego, where I was able to work with younger kids and see how my relationship with them was able to be built. So definitely those resources on campus, but also outside that are able to help guide you in whatever direction you may need to go. Catherine, yes. one of the, the questions that you raised that I, I, I don't know that I answered was, what did we wish we took more advantage of? Uh, yes. I, I would say, again, it, it's, a, it's a different, um, uh, it's a different uh, focus now. Uh, career services would have been something I wish I had taken more advantage of when I was a student. Um, now career services is, 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 does do and takes a great deal of interest in uh, helping students at all parts of the um, at all parts of, of of study, whether you're a freshman or sophomore or junior. I think as a student, I, I didn't quite understand that or see it that way back in the 1990s. I 
I, I just thought about, well, this is where I'll go when I want to figure out what my career is. But in reality, that's not what career services is. So if you're a student and you know, you're already here <laughs> um, taking a look at, at this program, but tell your friends and, and everyone you know that career services is probably uh, is just a, in, a, in addition to faculty and advisors, it's an awesome place to go if you're just thinking about careers. Um, they don't even have VHS tapes anymore. You can actually <laughs> you can actually go right on in there. Uh, it, uh, it's a little joke callback, but um, uh, it, it's it, it's really something you should you should you should do. And and when I was younger, I wish I understood that, and I wish I had taken better advantage of that uh, when I when I could have. I agree, Tom. My first semester here in Oswego, I was a part of the GST 110 course. And after taking a bunch of self-assessments, learning about my beliefs, my value, my strengths, it helped me narrow down the careers in which I'm interested. I still don't know what I want to do, but I have a more focused mind. And being involved with career services, there is so much they have to offer. And I always tell my friends, let me help you with your resume. Let me help you with resume. I really want, I want to encourage everyone here to take advantage of career services. They have so much to offer. Different career coaches in different industry areas to help you with your goals. They want you to be great. Take advantage. It's free. And even after Oswego, you can still utilize these resources. They want you to be great. This should be a slogan for career services. They want you to be great. <laughs> now, do any of the students have any questions for the panelists? If you have questions, feel free to raise your hand, um, or you can also just throw your question in the chat. And you can send it just to the host and the panelists if that makes you more comfortable. I see a question in the chat. Um, it was specifically for me. Um, so they asked, how did I keep like my motivation throughout this period? Because I did graduate through the pandemic. Um, honestly, a lot of individual time um, and video games, but also just being able to have those connections with like my family and the people that essentially motivate me um, to just keep going whether that is through school or through work and a lot of just self love, giving myself that grace that I extend to others and just being responsible with myself. At the end of the day, you're doing this for you, whether that is going to school, finishing your career and just doing things at your own pace as well. I, 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 I know many of the students are, are here to, several students are here today. And um, uh, like uh, you were saying, uh, you, trying to study during the pandemic can be a real challenge. Mm -hmm. I, I like that you are giving students the advice to, to practice some self-care. And I just wanna say, you know, and I work, obviously I'm at SUNY Cortland, so I work with students all day. And and I know that the students probably have heard this from other folks, but you need to know what you're doing is unprecedented uh, by studying during a global pandemic. Um, the last time this happened was with the Spanish flu and college was not what it is today and fewer students were in college, but do, do make, do avail yourselves of um, all the options that you have available to, to practice self-care, whether it's taking time to explore your career early on, uh, or whether it's, you know, uh, taking some time to, to visit with, uh, with faculty and staff and, and talk about how things are going and, and so forth. It, it, it's, it's a real challenge right now in the pandemic for everybody, but especially students, because you're still exploring. Um, but it also presents an opportunity, which is that um, the faculty and staff, I, I think, I, I, I know I, from graduating from Oswego, I know it's almost surely still the case. They're really mindful of this, and they're going to be very eager to help and help in, in, in extraordinary ways. So have the discussions about career, have the discussions about the majors, 
um, even now, because um, it, it's, it's, it's really a good time to be thinking about these things. And it, 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 the, the, the sort of relative quiet that comes from a, uh, this really terrible pandemic that we're dealing with um, does in some ways give you a little bit of space to, to reach out and to make some of those connections. And I, I'd encourage you to do that. Um, uh, especially since it can be so beneficial to you and it can really help you make some really good positive connections. But what you're doing now studying during a pandemic is exceptional and unprecedented and you should give yourselves a lot of credit for doing it. I can't imagine being a student during this time and I try very hard to be empathetic uh, because I work in higher education and uh, just do know that the, 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 the SUNY uh, folks at SUNY Oswego and, and, and throughout that we're, we're mindful of this and we want to help. Uh, so I, I really, I really like that advice to practice some self care. And this is one way to do it too. Yeah, so I want to add that there is a stigma with not knowing what you want to do. I remember my first year going to family events and them asking me, so what are you studying? And me saying, I don't know. And just having that face of shame, like, you don't know what you're doing, but you're in college. Like, yes, it's okay if you don't know what you're, you're doing. That's what the career coaches are here for. I have a question for all of the panelists. Do you have career goals that you're currently working towards? Free, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll mention I, I'm going back to school actually, starting, <laughs> starting this fall to to learn more about project management. I'm going for a certificate program, so that's a career goal that I have, and so again speaks to that. You know, I'm not sure what I want to be when I grow up, kind of mentality that I have. There's, you know, there's there's other things to explore, and uh, there's other uh, other avenues to take a look at, and. Um, so that's that's one of my career goals that uh, I'm I'm actually going back to school for the first time in a very long time. <laughs> for me, I recently just um, got my CPA license. I just passed all the CPA exams. My short term goal is to um, help to get promoted this year, so I can be senior associate. Um, in terms of long-term goal, I, I'm not sure <laughs> if I'll be staying in audit forever. So then that could be something that I'm also exploring too. I like audit, but like, I'm not sure if I want to try something else too. So, but if there are opportunities, I'm open to try something other than audit. For me, over the last two years, being like remote while teaching definitely opened up my eyes into ed tech. So I'm trying to explore what that may look like for me um, and just learning a little bit more about how education and technology combine together and how that's going to help students have more access to different educational levels and softwares and different programs. So definitely wanting to explore that would be my next step in my career. Okay, thank you for sharing. I have another question for you alumni. What are ways that you still continue to focus on your own professional development and career exploration? Um, I, I, uh, I, I participate in a lot of professional organizations um, that, you know, uh, whether it's sociology, which I, as an administrator, do that to a bit of a lesser degree now. But, um, I, for example, uh, in SUNY, we have the State University of New York Registrars Association, so I stay active with them. It helps to stay on 
top of things and the policies and the state of the art in the in the in the field. Um, so that's a way that I've kind of tried to continue uh, learning and and staying engaged with the community. Um, I'm I'm uh, so professional organizations again going back to school taking courses where you can. Uh, even even as you're in a career, maybe you find something that interests you. That's another way to kind of continue honing skills or exploring other skills that you may not even know you have yet. Definitely taking advantage of different online resources. I think that that is like the best part of like the internet. Um, so there are a lot of courses out there, a lot of different people that you can meet that are always open to share their experiences or help guide you in the direction that you may need to be pointed. So definitely using resources like career services or LinkedIn, you're able to make those connections and even meet mentors online that can help you. That transitions so well into a question we have in our Q&A. So I wanna ask it right now. Um, so Lexi asked, who were your mentors through your career growth and how has that helped you? Because I know you can get mentors on LinkedIn, like you just mentioned, but there's so many ways. So do each of you want to shout out one of your mentors that you had um, and how that relationship helped you? I so mean, I just finished answer, so I will just go ahead. Um, one of my mentors is actually in the chat. Um, so Derek is one of my awesomest mentors ever. And he has just been able to just guide me through so many different things in life, um, whether it was like personal or career wise, and just being able to have someone that is going to support you, whether you go into what you decided to go into, or maybe you change your mind, um, definitely helps. So creating spaces like Mentor Oswego or LinkedIn, um, I know that there are programs called like mentor.org, where you're able to just meet people that are part of different communities and even Facebook groups out there um, that are just guiding you and pushing you forward. So my number one go-to um person is he's also my friend and my mentor so basically we went to the same high school college he also went to SUNY Oswego but like he's two years ahead of me so and then he's also in um so we're also in the same firm right now but in different um a little bit different pro um industry I will go to him for a lot of questions, like whether it was like school related, because he was also accounting major. So I could always go to him and ask for um, help um, accounting related questions. And then while I was still on school, he's already started his career also at KPMG. So I also reached out to him to ask, it, ask about like how was his like first two years at the company and then what's what's like his daily job. So I know I, I know I have a like expectation or kind of job that like I'll be doing too. Even now, like he transferred to different industry products, but we are still in the same firm. So I could still go to him and ask him for like um what made you to change that like um or was it easy to change like to change industry for him? or even his like career paths, like maybe like for the next year or next few years. I feel like that's also very helpful to me, like someone who have similar paths like me. And then I can always go to him for like similar questions. Awesome, thank you for sharing. Stephanie is happy to hear about all of your career paths and ask if, you guys could speak about the soft skills that students could develop that can help them during, as they develop professionalism. Uh, 
Um, I, I would say um, one of the, uh, the, the soft skills that you can develop or that you might focus on is, uh, as a student is, is networking. And that means you know, going out and talking to as many folks as you can, taking part in things with career services, uh, talking to, whether it's talking to alumni, uh, whether it's talking to your faculty uh, mentors or uh, talking to your, just your professors, your advisors, um, doing that and, and building good relationships with them uh, and just getting that practice in will be really helpful in your career once you move out of college. And also it'll be helpful for you to build your career and to, to build skills while you're at Oswego. So I would say that would be a key one that you can work on. And it doesn't take a lot of uh, uh, time investment or, uh, or all other types of investment, it's something that you can do um, and, and, and pick up right away and, and really get a lot of benefit from. When or Natalie, is there a soft skill that you want to highlight? Maybe one that made a big difference in your career success or what got you to where you are today? I yeah. agree with Tom. Networking is super important because, like, those a lot of people, they are um, many years ahead of you. They have accumulated so much resource experience. So, like, making connection with them really help you on your career paths. Because like um, one of my co-op was an internal audit co-op. And that was, also the, that was also someone who graduated from Oswego like maybe 20 years ago. And then he was the director of the company. He set up like um, a long-term co-op between SUNY Oswego and the company. So every year we will have like two students, two students, and then go into the company, and then do like six um six months co-op. I just feel like connection is very important. They, it they not only bring you the resource, but also helping you on your career path, and then like maybe even offer you a lot more opportunity if you don't have connections. I would have to add just not being afraid to make mistakes and asking for help. For me, when I was in Oswego, like those were like my biggest challenges. Like I did not like asking for help, but definitely as you get older, you start realizing that at the end of the day, something that you don't know, someone might know. And a question that you might have, someone else might have. So just taking the time to just ask questions, whether you think they're silly or not, and just being open to making mistakes, because at the end of the day, you cannot learn without making mistakes. I agree. Advocating for yourself is a lifelong skill. We have another question for you all. Have you ever had to take two steps back to take five forward, such as a job or career change just to pay your bills? Um, I, I have, I had to, uh, to do that. I, I, I didn't, it wasn't necessarily um, uh, 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 just to pay bills, but I did step out of a field that I was working in um, and uh, kind of took a leap of faith into a, a temporary position, which um, can be scary. So I, I left, I was an advisor uh, when I first graduated from college as an academic advisor, and I took a leap into a grant funded project management role because I wanted to learn more and do more. And it didn't have the job security or anything that other types of jobs would have had. It had an expiration date. So in a lot of ways, it was a real risk. It wasn't necessarily two steps back um, perfectly, but it was in the sense that I veered off of the, the track that I was on and, and I was no longer going A to Z. I, I said, I want to I want to take a, a, a turn off and try something different career wise. And it also 
meant I gave up a lot of job security and left a, a position where I think I was pretty well liked and, and went into the unknown. Um, so it, in a lot of ways, it was steps back because I gave up some security and comfort. But I mean, in the end, like you, like the question says, it probably gave me more steps forward than back because it allowed me to stretch out and do different things. So I don't know if that's a, a perfect example of that, but that that's what comes to mind, uh, at least in my career, that, that that had happened, that taking risks can sometimes be a step back because, um, you know, it, it, it it's scary. Uh, even, you know, it, even when you're well-established in a career, it can be very scary. Um, so for me, I'm always interested in doing rotation. So, but like, um, in order to do that, like you might have to rotate to different industry, but like that might delay your promotion because like, for example, I'm currently in, I'm currently in real estate practice, but like I'm interested in different one. I'm also interested in advisory practice and also maybe like different, like, um, just a little bit different industry. But in order to do that, like for example, if you rotate half year or um, one year and then you come back to um, real estate industry because compared to your peers in the real, real estate industry, you losing one year in this industry. Like, so even though you're on different industry, but like the one that you're currently in, you will have one year experience less than your peers. So sometimes like that might cause you to delay your promotion for half a year or a year, depending on the situation. But that also depends on how you make your decision. Because if you really want to try something different, I'll say it's, it's worse to do it because you might end up choosing a totally different industry after you do your rotation. So I'll say like that sacrifice, it's um, it's not a bad decision to do it, but that's like a more like a personal um, decision. At least for me, I feel like that's where I'm headed because I am thinking of doing like a career change into ed tech. So it's definitely a personal decision. Like you have to figure out what it is that you're giving up or what it is that you're going to be gaining. So just figuring out where your balance might be, whether that is, yes, you're giving up your job security for a year because, you know, it's a contract experience. But how is it that that experience is going to impact you in the long run? Thank you for sharing. Does anyone else have any questions? I have one question. I think it's just a good one to close it off because I think we got to all of them in the chat and the Q and A. Um, so for our alumni panelists, before we close off, what would be your takeaway that you would want someone who attended this session to have? Your big tip that if you have like 30 seconds to give someone a tip, what would be what you'd want to share? Or it's something you'd want to be remembered for give advice that you'd want to be remembered for giving. My giveaway will be be open mind and don't worry about trying something new. If you see an opportunity that you're interested in, definitely try it. You never know like how it how that will impact you or like even if you don't like it, at least you find out that okay, maybe that's not something that you want. But like if something that you have interest in, definitely try it. You might end up really liking it and just like keep going forward to it and be open mind. Don't worry about trying something new. That's my takeaway. Yeah, I, I can't say it any better. That's 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 probably the advice I would give too. I mean, it kind of goes back to the the question that Catherine asked the first or second one, which was, you know, do you need to know 
what what you're going to be um I, I, and and you know kind of jumping on what when has said no you don't and you should be open to all sorts of uh opportunities and ideas uh either as a student uh, as you are now or even when you're out into your career um as you know as many of us shown here today we are still uh, trying to be open to, to new opportunities, new ideas, uh, and, and uh, always, always keep evolving and, and, and just always, always be looking for what you want to be when you grow up. <laughs> I would have to agree and also add not being afraid of not knowing because at the end of the day, we're all still, you know, like Thomas said, we're all still learning, we're all still evolving, and not knowing is part of that journey. It's okay to not know, especially now, <laughs> especially now, because the, the, the industries are changing very rapidly because of what we're all experiencing. It's, it's okay to not know. Yeah, and there are resources and people that want to help you and guide you in the right direction. You just have to take advantage of them. And there are two career coaches here for you guys and three other at the office. Take advantage. Thank you, Tom, Natalyn, and Wen for sharing your stories with us today. And thank you to the audience. I recommend connecting with the panelists on LinkedIn. I know I will. And if you guys don't know what LinkedIn is, visit the Career Services Center to meet with peer navigators to help you set up your LinkedIn account. <laughs> Thank you. I'm probably going to go to Career Services because I, I barely know what LinkedIn is. So I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that myself, actually. <laughs> Everything but we please, do, we do for life. There. So please. <laughs> I, I'm um, on there, but please connect with me if you if you'd like. It's I, I certainly would be interested, but uh, I'm I'm still I'm still learning LinkedIn myself in a lot of ways. <laughs> so for all of our attendees as well, we would love for you to complete our post session feedback survey. It's in the Google form that I just dropped into the chat. Um, if you could complete this, it would be amazing. We really want your feedback and your opinion on Imagine 2022. Um, each successful submission of this form will count as one entry towards this week's prizes. So we ask that you complete this for every single session that you attend. So the more that you attend, the more you complete, the more chances you have to win some awesome prizes, which is a lot of SUNY Oswego swag, which we all love our institution. So we wanna rep it proud. Thank you again to our alumni and to Catherine for being our awesome student facilitator today. I have loved hearing from each and every one of you. If anyone has any questions, please reach out. Career Services is here for you for life. Mm -hmm.